we're going to be talking about dose response analysis. Dose response analysis is basically fitting a regression to a particular data set. This particular data set usually originates from studies that aim to evaluate the toxicity of some elements. For this regression, what we have as explanatory variables is usually a dose or a function of those, like log of dose, with varying levels. And as response variable, we have, in this particular case, a binary response 0 or 1 for a particular effect of the application of this drug that could be did recover or didn't recover, did die or didn't die, etc. Now, those response analyses are used in many fields, for example, in pharmacology, entomology, biology, etc. And the idea is to determine the efficacy and safety, or even lethality, of a given drug or toxic element. What we do normally is we fit a regression. In this case, we're fitting a regression of those against that specific response. For example, we have here the regression that looks at different doses, and the response variable means the proportion of those individuals that died. After we do the fitting of the curve, what we do is we determine specific values from this curve, such as effective dose, toxic dose, and lethal dose. In the example of lethal dose, what we have here is LD50, which means that when we have a mortality of 50%, that is going to be the concentration that produced that mortality. So it's important to know that value because we can characterize this toxic and we can also associate 95% confidence interval to this value or other values. Now, because our response are zeros and ones, depending on how do we define that response, that could be again alive or dead, what we have here is a binary response that has a binomial distribution, which means we cannot fit it under the normal traditional models and we use generalized linear models or specifically in this case, we'll be using probit or logistic regressions or logistic models to fit this particular data. So we're going to be using a data set from a study that evaluates the selenium toxicity. And this data set comes from a study on flies that had as an objective to compare the toxicity of four different forms of the trace element selenium. Now, selenium is used for pest control, because it repels some of the insects, but also reduces their growth or causes toxic effects, therefore inducing mortality. But it has a positive effect on plants, so there is some interest for that. In this study, four forms of selenium are considered, T1, T2, T3, and T4, and the idea is to estimate different EC50 values for each of those types. Now, these were evaluated over an array of concentrations on groups of approximately 150 flies, and after a certain period, the number of dead flies were counted. So the objective of this study is to characterize the toxicology profiles of these different forms of seleniums, and then we want to calculate the effective concentration at which 50% of the mortality occurs. So this is defined as the EC50. So let's have a little look at the data set. So under the folder dose, we have selenium TXT, and we can see here under the column type, we have T1, T2, T3, and T4. And let me make this a bit bigger. And then we have the different concentrations. T1 goes from 0 to 500, T2, 0, 500, but the other ones have different levels to 800 with different scales. And this one only goes to 100. And that has to do with the level of toxicity of all of those. And then what we have here is the number of individuals in the sample, in this case the number of flies. So we have 151 flies total, and three of those, this is the number of deaths, died. And you can see here that we have 140 flies and 112 died. So we have an increasing level of mortality with an increased level of the dose in this particular case. So we can proceed to do the analysis and looking at the data. Now we'll have to use this logistic or probit uh, regression. So I'm going to proceed to uh, read the data. This is called toxic. And we can see the values here. And for the exploratory data analysis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first define the factors, just a factor which is the type to make sure it's the concentration is going to be considered as a continuous. But because of these numbers, what I'm going to do as a temporary way just to explore the data, I'm going to estimate the number of dead against the total number of samples, so it's a proportion. 
and I can have an idea that the proportion moves from 0 to 1, I can actually calculate a summary of this toxic proportion just to give us an idea. It goes, let me put a C there, it goes from 0 to 100% mortality. I can have a table which tells me for the different treatments all the different concentrations that were used, and we know they're a bit different in some of the cases. And then I'm going to use the library ggplot to get uh, different lines for each of these curves. So the ggplot needs to be loaded, and I'm going to put on the x-axis the concentration, on the y-axis the proportion, and I'm going to add lines and colors to each of these, and a line at 50%. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. So what we have here is we have the different curves, and you can see this is the line of 50%, which is our objective, and we want to estimate the concentration at that 50. This one seems to reach that level very early on the concentration, so at lower levels, and some of them a little bit higher levels, and you can see a little bit of the variability between these different treatments and so on. So our idea is to fit these equations where the x-axis is the concentration and the y-axis is going to be a proportion or a function of that proportion. Let me just go back to the slides and show a little bit about the model. We're going to be using the logit model. We usually write a logit of p over a proportion. The proportion is obtained as the number of successes, in this case the number of deaths, divided by the number of total observations that we have. This is equivalent to the expression of log of the proportion divided by y minus the proportion. We don't look at this really, we just specify y and n in everything is calculated internally in the majority of the software. So we have an intercept and we have a slope. This is just a regression. The intercept associated with treatment 1, 2, 3, and 4, individual intercepts and individual the slopes associated with the concentration, or in this case with the dose, and then we have different slope for each of the different elements. So everything is going to be analyzed together into the same analysis. So for that, we are going to start by fitting a logit model. ASREML has, just for to show you a bit what happens, ASREML has different um, families. So it has generalized linear mixed models that uses different distribution, Gaussian, normal, gamma, inverse. We're going to use the binomial. And we can specify the type of link we have. We can use a probit or a logic, different. And then we can specify the dispersions and the total numbers of observations written there. And there is other ones, and I recommend to look a little bit of the manual in, in case you want to see more what happens. So I'm going to proceed to fit my logic model. And the things go very similar to what we have done before. We write down the response variable. And again, I'm going to refresh myself of what I have for my data. So I'm going to just write SDR toxic. <coughs> my response variable is not the proportion. I put directly the number of deaths. And then I say that I'm going to want a mean or I'm not going to want a mean. So I'm going to say type which represents an intercept for each of these four levels. And then I write type two dots concentration, which is going to be a slope associated with each one of those continuous variables. Now, because I don't want an intercept or a mu to the model, I just write minus one. That means it's going to give me four intercepts, and then it's going to give me the four slopes associated with this model. Now, this is not finished at all. I need to indicate what family I'm going to use. So we're going to use ASR binomial. And then within that, we have to specify what link we want. And it's giving me a little bit of a help there. We're going to use a logit. And then we indicate what dispersion we want. And dispersion by default is assumed to be one, but we can play to make it slightly bigger. And this is what we're going to find in this. And then the total is my column the number of samples that I have. And that's going to be that line. And do I need to do anything more? Yes, I need to specify just the data, which is going to be toxic. So this should run, no problem, unless I made a mistake with one of the parentheses, which I did. I have an extra parenthesis here, which I don't need. And then the model should fit. And it's going to fit the model under generalized linear model. It's going to assume the data needs to be transformed and needs to be weighted differently according to generalized linear models. 
in this case is going to be a logistic regression because we have concentration as a continuous variable and we have intercepts and slopes. Now what's interesting here is that we have this variance heterogeneity factor, which is the an over dispersion parameter, is 7.87. We usually want this to be close to 1. This is not very close to 1, which means we have potentially some issues with our data. But before I go there, I'm just going to proceed a little bit to look at how my distribution of the residuals looks, and it seems to be looking relatively okay. There is a good dispersion here. Uh, hard to see there's outliers because we don't have a great amount of observations. Now I can proceed to, for example, look at the variance components, which are not going to be very relevant because the variance component is always fixed to one. In this case, we fix it to one because we have an over, over dispersion to be exactly one. Now I can do the ANOVA or similar to ANOVA, sometimes called analysis of deviance for this. And then I have to indicate again the denominator degrees of freedom. This is going to be numeric. And then SS type conditional. This is the difference of the intercept between the different types. In this case, the different intercepts are highly significant. And more important than that, also the different slopes are all highly significant. Now we do have that problem with over dispersion. But we can also access to the different coefficients of these regressions, which we do just logic, and then we say coef equals to true, and then we ask for the coefficient fixed. So now what we have is we have the intercept, and then we have the slope of treatment 1, the intercept, and the slope of treatment 2, and so on. And we can proceed to plot these different things in different ways. Now, because I have over dispersion, I'm going to do a logic model with over dispersion. We want this value to be close to 1, and if there is bigger than 1, it's because there's some other elements that are affecting that variability that are not considered in our case. We don't have the information associated with that. It could be that our link function is not very good. It could be that we miss another covariable for something, or it could be that the insects were, for example, of different, slightly different groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything I did before, and I'm just going to add this over dispersion to a value and fix it to a higher value, which in this case I'm going to fix it to 7.87. The rest is going to be the same. You won't notice too much of a difference into your model. The distribution is going to be the same. The variance component now is fixed to not to 1 to 7.87. But you will notice the differences on some of these p-values because we have more variability. Now we have additional elements. We have not a very strong significance difference between the different types. We don't have a significance between the different concentrations. Again, because we have more variability than we had. And also our coefficients tend to be much larger. For example, we have 0 0.49 and before we have 0 0.17, so almost three times more we have an excess of variability. Again, this is something of a concern, but I'm just showing you a little bit how do we analyze this. So we now proceed to obtain some of the predictions, and I'm going to just fit a model where we use the logit, and just to show you a little bit what we have, we can get the different combination of type by concentration and I can ask for different levels from which one I want this. So I'm going to give a list of concentrations equals to 0, 50, 100, 200, let's say 300. So this is going to give me really evaluating the regression for each combination of type concentration which is for each of the different curves at the levels of 0, 50, 100, 200, and 300. So then it gives me the value on the original scale, which is this log it or the log of p divided by 1 minus p. But then it does a back transformation, so it tells me the actual proportion. And you can see here, for 300, there is almost 50% mortality on that one. For this is 39%. For this is a 99% mortality already. And some standard errors associated with those predictions. So this is pretty cool because then we can plot the different graphs just by adding different levels here. 
Now I'm going to estimate the EC50. I'm just going to use the same function and you have to trust me here because I already a little bit of that work and I'm going to say I want this concentration to be 300.2 for type 1 and that's going to give me oh, too many parentheses and that's going to tell me that this concentration 3.02 gives me exactly uh, or very close to a 50%. So I did by trial error looking at different concentrations which one of those will give me a 50%. So the EC50 for this treatment happens to be 302 and then just to let you know for the other treatments are going to be 395.5 for this one and you can do a search method but this is as effective as the other one an 85.2. So we have, again, in all the cases, values very close to 0.5, value very close to 0.5, and value very close from 0.5. So all of these values here represent the concentrations from the four different chemicals at which we have this 50% mortality. So I just show you how to fit binary data and how to obtain different things from the curves you fit, also plot the curve, and get all the relevant information for this sort of toxicology studies on this type of curves.